What do you call someone, in this case a man, who chooses to go up to unknowing women and sniff butt? That's what he did. Sniffed butt. I'll give you the details. TikTokers catch the same man sneaking up and sniffing them. What are what are we doing here? What are we doing? Southern California, a man caught on video on two different occasions sneaking up on women and sniffing them. Watch. So I get to Barnes and Noble and get my Starbucks. I'm super excited to look at books, but this is the area that it started. I was in this corner for a while and I noticed a guy was staring at me through that little hole. And I couldn't tell if I was being paranoid or if he was just reading a book and he just happened to be in that little corner. Anyways, it felt like anywhere I moved, he kept following me. So I recorded just in case he was trying to say anything or do anything to me. But I definitely didn't expect him to do this. Like what the actual... And the whole time I'm thinking I'm fine because he hasn't said anything or touched me or anything. But then you notice that he goes over and does the same thing to this girl. And he'll crouch down low and pretend like he's doing something and then smell. I don't know. And the whole time I'm wondering why he's always around me. But this was our interaction. What are you doing? I'm tired. What are you doing? I was so freaked out when I turned around and saw him literally under me, so freaking close to me. So I decided to tell the front desk. This is a really creepy guy. Um, yeah, he has like these red beads and he's like pretending like he's tying shoes and I think he's like smelling people. Can you be like around there? Oh, oh. Pull up a manager now. Thank you. And then I try to walk to my car as fast as possible because I don't want to run into him. Southern California, Barnes and Noble. Woman just wants to find a new book. One of the thoughts I had was, this is so pathetic and sick. This sniffing, is this a one-off? But the thing is, people who are compelled to sniff and do this kind of thing, compelled to do it, it has to be malignant, right? And indeed, there's another woman who had a similar encounter. Are you following me? No. My bad. Yeah. Let's give me the details. Police in California are investigating whether a 36 year old ex-convict was recently arrested in a peeping Tom case and has a history of prowling offenses. Is the same man seen in the viral TikTok videos appearing to crouch behind women sniffing their butts at a Los Angeles area Barnes and Noble bookstore. Detectives will be speaking with other potential victims to confirm it is the same person they encountered, the statement said. The man suspected in the crime is Khalees Karan Crowder, who was arrested on a warrant August 6th for a different prowling incident at a family home in suburban Glendale. Police said he pleaded no contest at his arraignment on Monday and he was sentenced to 60 days in the county jail. He was ordered to enter a sexual impulse rehabilitation program. I want to keep the mug shot. Up because you know it's not about people's looks, but the ears make him fully identifiable. They also make me wonder if he was sniffing around Mike Tyson's house because they appear to be altered in some way. This man apparently has been doing this for so long because Candace Ori, the wife of former Lakers star Robert Ori, the one with all those rings. Said Crowder stalked their daughter a decade ago at their home. He went to jail only to come out and continue the same behavior. She wrote on X, the company previously known as Twitter. Thank you for getting the word out that he is back. He needs to be put away for good. Crowder's long history of illegal acts, we'll go through them. 
Long history of peeping, prowling, residential burglary in Glendale, police said when he was arrested for prowling in September 2021. According to a news release, in June 2011, Crowder was arrested for peeping and occupied residential burglaries. He was convicted and sentenced to eight years in prison, officials said. His arrest came after an hours long search that shut down a six block area. Los Angeles Daily News reported law and crime filling in details. According to the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, Crowder's conviction history dates to 2006 when he was sentenced to two years for second degree robbery. He received 395 days of pre-sentence credits awarded by the sentencing court for time served while awaiting trial, officials said. He was released to parole supervision August 29, 2007 after serving his full sentence as defined by law. Over the next five years, Crowder would return to prison multiple times for similar burglary offenses. Here again, Ben, I don't believe this is being taken seriously. He goes away from burglary for years, but for sniffing 60 days, stalking a child, it's unconscionable. I've not heard of this kind of conduct, now I know. We need, it seems like we need three strikes laws back, not allowing you to go over the limit for victimless crimes, for drug crimes like it was mistakenly done in the first place. But if somebody is a consistent nuisance to society, you can't allow other people's lives to be disturbed, to be ruined, to be traumatized because somebody doesn't want to play by the accepted rules of society. And that's from the very bottom to the very top of the power echelons of our country, you just cannot allow it. You can't allow that shy woman to be making four recent similar threatening phone calls. You can't allow this man to be harassing women at bookstores around the world and messing with the wife of one of my favorite basketball players of all time, Mm. number five, Robert Ory. Man's got six rings, you don't want a punch from a fist that has six rings on it, probably five rings. And then one on the other hand, but you get the point. And I think really the underlying, this is a horrible person with horrible actions. Underlying this also is this is not going to help the struggling bookstore industry to make no. a comeback either. <laughs> you order for a book online, nobody sniffs you. And so <laughs> bookstores are going to have to do a better job of monitoring the clientele walking in there. Otherwise, your your last vestiges of a breath are not going to be lasting long. It's going to be the plot of you've got mail without the nice ending on the bridge. Mm. Hey, man, I got to tell you, you know, and if someone like Robert Ory grabs Shaq, the time he's with the Lakers, and he goes and handles it himself, in a case like this, people would say, "Whoa, okay, we understand, but let the law deal with this sniffer." Barnes and Nobles, though. Ben should not have to, you know, put up a sign that says shoes, shirts required, and by the way, no sniffing. Okay, women should be able to go to look at books, coffee, get out of the house, whatever it is, and not be subjected to this. I think that there's a heroic yeah. measure with them because it's embarrassing. Even though you you didn't ask for this and you're you're not really part of this, he's the sick one. But they're warning others. Yes, if you had to put every deviant behavior on signs entering facilities, those would be long signs. People are very creative in how disturbing they are. And you're right, I think, you know, we live in this TikTok, Instagram age, and at least that is one thing that people can do. It's one thing that a woman can do that at least take some of her power back in this situation instead of having to silently suffer these things and have people not even believe them often. I mean, the things that I've had girlfriends tell me that they're exposed to by men just passing by in a tight space, grabbing their ass, doing just the worst inappropriate things. You almost don't, until you really learn it or see it up close, you just think it's some degree in someone's head. You're like, really? You're caught every day you're being right. And then you see it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, really? There's just a bunch of jerks and monsters out there. You're dealing with it nearly every day. And so at least now people can post on TikTok and feel that they're taking control of their own narrative and spreading the word and warning others. So that's one small modicum of relief in a world that at least can expose these things and hopefully make action much like you know the filming of corrupt police. 
you wish the action never happened in the first place, but the filming is what is going to bring change. Yeah, gotta call it out. Gotta continue to call it out, ladies. Document it, do all you can, and be on the lookout, okay? Be on the lookout for this kind of behavior. Eat Brussels sprouts as well. I wanna eat Brussels sprouts, okay? He's got to be kept at bay.